welcome to this makeup tutorial that has been requested by like one or two people. So it's a natural looking glam. It doesn't have too much eyeshadow, too much smokiness happening. It just is a nice balance between the two. But I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. I will say now that my eyes dart back and forth from looking at the screen and looking at the camera, I'm so sorry. It's just really distracting when all you can see is my face right there. And I keep forgetting to look at the camera, but hopefully I'll get better at this. But enjoy and let me know if you wanna see any other look. Just as I thought, trash. I'm gonna prep the skin. Usually I pop on a little bit of highlighter. So the one I'm using today is from Clay Cosmetics and it's almost like a cushion foundation. So it's a little bit different to your like traditional liquid highlighter. I'm just pretty much pressing it in and then I'm gonna press it into the skin. You don't need that much because to be honest with you, it is quite glossy, but I'm just gonna pop it on the higher points of the cheekbone, just around there. So naturally you can see the light already hits around here, under the brow bone and just around there as well. So that's kind of where I'm gonna place it. But you can see it starts to give you a really wet, glossy feel. And sometimes I'll do a quick swipe on the nose. I wouldn't recommend doing this if you're really oily. I do a quick swipe there and just under here as well. Now I take the Kat Von D contour palette. I usually take that color there, but if I want a really, really sharp contour, I take the color in the middle. But because this is more of a natural, like soft glam during the day, I'd do that one there. And so you guys have probably seen on my Instagram stories already, one of my favorite brushes is the Real Techniques brush. And I like using it for foundation and I like using it for um, contour as well. But what I do is I just melt the product into the brush and then I just lightly tap it in. Sometimes it looks a little bit heavy, but it's fine. Once you pop the foundation on, everything is sort of blended in together. So as you can see, I've concentrated here. Yeah, that's because I like to contour this bit. I like to sort of swipe it, but just make sure you blend everything, otherwise it looks wild. If there are some harsh lines, it doesn't really matter too much because you're gonna go back in with foundation anyway. And then I usually take a swipe under here because I like a really chiseled jaw. If you're trying to reduce the size of the jaw, there's no point just going under here. You need to have half the brush under and half the brush on top. So it's 50-50 so that you're really sort of shaving that jaw off as opposed to just contouring the bottom. So this is my personal concealer. It's not one from my kit, so I'm just gonna dip my finger into it. But I just pop it all over my eyelid as a base. I really like using this one because, I don't know if I said in the last video, I find that it blocks out all the dullness and the darkness on the eye. However, on really dry eyelids, this is a no-go. I like to concentrate it at the front because that's where your eyes tend to be really, really dark. I've been using the NARS Velvet Loose Powder in the color beach it's almost like a banana powder i don't know if you guys can see the color it is nice it's not a must-have to be honest with you i'm just using it because i have it um it is really silky and soft but i find that it doesn't really hold oils for very long but i'm just using because i have it and i like the color as well i just take a little bit of the powder and then i just lightly dust it over the eyelids just to set that um, concealer a little bit i'm gonna go in with the bronzer from mac called give me sun just like that. I feel like it's a really nice transition shade. You can use whatever bronzer you already have. It doesn't really matter too much, but it pretty much shapes and carves out the eye for you so that you kind of have a bit more depth in the eye. And I find this works really well, even just as an eyeshadow on its own. Pop it in the crease initially, but as you're blending it, you're blending it upwards because there's no point blending something into the crease because it will just get lost as you open your eyes. And as you can see, I always keep my eyes open when I do this because I find that if you keep closing your eyes when you do your eyeshadow, you'll never know what it looks like when you open your eyes. So you're pretty much blending and hoping for the best. In the look that I did for this one a couple of months ago, I used a chocolate bar palette. So I'm just gonna go back in with this one and just try to recreate the same thing. So I'm gonna go in with milk chocolate and this is like a contour contour color so it will contour the shape of my eye and it give, give it a little bit more depth pretty much I'm going going in with the Morphe M433 and then once again keeping my eyes open I'm buffing this into the crease first before I ever blend it upwards so first depositing the color in the crease and as you can see already there's a lot more depth on the left side. This look is all about building up the contour of the eye. You're not really slamming the color straight onto the lid. You're just gradually building it up and building up the shape and the depth. And I keep going back in just to keep adding depth. 
So say if your mono lid sort of didn't have a very prominent crease, sort of have a feel for where the crease would technically be if you did have a deep crease and usually your eyeball socket gives you an indicator and all you do is push your brush in and you can have a feel of where it is. Push it in like that and then just start blending the shadow there. Otherwise, if you follow the natural crease of the eye, you're never going to create depth or like you're never going to be able to mimic depth. So you have to sort of create a fake crease by pushing the brush in. Go back in with the color Salted Caramel and I'm actually going to buff it into the crease again just to diffuse any of the harsh lines, which there aren't too many, but I'm just going to use the color just to spread everything a bit further out so there's more depth. So after I blended in that Salted Caramel, as you can see, it just has a little bit more depth and it just softens the edges a little bit. Now I'm going to go in with the color Saddle and it's from MAC. So I'm going to add more depth. I'm going to take it on the outskirts of the eye now. I'm using the Morphe 506. This brush is fantastic for like the outer corner and the crease. Just blending in general where you don't want to spread the color too far. Just like that. Now I'm going back in with the Too Faced palette and I'm going to use the color I'm going to use the color white chocolate. I'm just going to take a flat eyeshadow brush like this and I'm just going to press it on two thirds, the front two thirds of the eye. And I sort of just tap it in as well. This brush is a Sigma brush, but it's pretty much just like a flat eyeshadow brush. So you can use whatever you like. It doesn't have to be this one. I don't, can't even tell you what this one is because the color has come off it because it's so old. And you don't want to go beyond the crease. You just want to sort of stop at where the crease is. And if there's too much white deposited on the ends, you can go back in with the small brush and blend out the sides again. So next up, I'm going to do the eyeliner. I'm going to go in with the paintbrush and I'm going to go in with the MAC Black Track. You can use whatever eyeliner you want. You can use a pen, um, you can use a gel, whatever's easier for you, it really doesn't matter. Whatever the direction of your bottom lash line goes in, you sort of want to extend it. So say I'm following it all the way and then... Like that. This is really hard to do on camera. I also find the MAC Black Track, it's not necessarily waterproof. I've heard the Inglot one is really good too. And if your liner is not like crisp and perfect at the top, it's totally fine. Like honestly, lashes cover a lot of things. If you're having a hard time with the gel liner, you can always take the liquid wing liner and just clean up the edges a little bit. I find that the color tends to deposit a little bit easier. Um, the only thing I don't like about liquid pens is that it has a really weird shine to it and I prefer like a matte finish, but to clean up the edges, it's totally fine. I keep looking at the wrong side of the camera. So I always use this foundation. It's the NARS foundation in the color Guadalupe. I'm just gonna use a little bit. I usually just go bit by bit because you just don't want to overdo the foundation too much. But I just want to say these sponges from Model Rock are amazing. And I got these for $25, but I got three. $35 for one beauty blender or $25 for three of these. Like, But I'm just going in drop by drop. With the foundation i'm not doing a whole pump on my hand or anything i used to do that all the time and then i would waste so so much because you end up not using that much anyway it really is all about the skin in this look and less on the eyes obviously I'm gonna use this Tarte Shape Tag Concealer in the color Medium. I use the tiniest dot of it. It's really, really full coverage. So I will just tap a little bit on just the at the front of the eye, just to correct that darkness. Um, just a tiny, tiny bit. Usually this drop that I use, I don't even use all of it. I'm not even adding more to it or anything like that. It's just spreading really well. I will take a little bit around the mouth. Naturally, I get a bit darker around the mouth. So I try to correct that with this concealer. And I'll go back in with a sponge and take whatever's left over on the concealer into the sponge so that my concealer that's on my face won't soak into the sponge. Um, and then I'll just press it in. 
It's not a concealer I would leave lying on the skin to set. I would buff it out straight away because it just does not blend afterwards. It really is super drying. Next up, I'm gonna take the NARS concealer in custard. This is the Radiant Creamy Concealer. As you guys know, my under eye bags are quite, quite dark. So I lay a lot of concealer on top. Um, it's not everyone's cup of tea and that's totally cool. But this is just how I do my makeup because my under eye bags are really dark. Naturally, my eyes do crease. It's just the way makeup works. You can't expect a miracle. I don't mind. As long as it's covered the darkness, I couldn't care less. But I'm just going to do a quick swipe just there. I'm going to do a quick swipe just under here as well. And up here. Then I'm going to do a little bit on the chin. In like a V. And I'll do some on the Cupid's bow. Not Cupid's bow, the, what do you call this? I'll do a little bit. Just, this is running dry, so I keep having to dip it back into the container. But I'm just gonna do a little bit down the nose like this. Yeah, like that. And I'm gonna go back in with that Kat Von D palette again. And I'm gonna scoop out a little bit of that and I'm gonna contour the nose. This is not the best brush to use, honestly. This is the Morphe 432 and I use it to carve out concealer on my brows, but it's decent enough. It's just not very soft, so sometimes you get a very harsh line on the nose, but I don't mind, I blend it out anyway. So I'll just go like this. I don't drag it because this brush is really stiff, so if you drag it, you're just gonna end up pulling off the foundation underneath. And then I like sort of cutting off the bottom of the nose just so that it lifts the tip, if that makes sense. Also, I like to do the sides. So I like to go across and I like to cut through the nose. And then I just do a little V like that. Wow, it looks wild right now, but I promise you once you blend it out, is all good. Classic, classic product, Liquid Laguna from NARS. While I let the concealer set, I'm gonna start bronzing out the skin. I'm gonna go back in with the same brush I used to do the contour, but just go like this. I'm gonna go back in and blend out the concealer. So to blend it out, I always put a little bit of concealer on my hand and then I will tap the sponge in there just so that it can repel any of the concealer it wants to soak up. But by leaving it there, it makes it much more full coverage. And you've probably seen this technique on like TikTok or YouTube and stuff, but Jackie Iron has been doing this technique for quite some time. But it works really well. I mean, the only person I would suggest it to is someone that just likes a really natural, dewy, like, finish. Like, I would not suggest this. But if you want a full coverage beat, you want to let that concealer set. I will blend out the nose last because I don't want to muddle the contour with the rest of my concealer. I'll blend out the middle first and I'll move the sponge around and I'll start to try and blend out the sides. Okay, now, so I'm just gonna go back in with the Clay Cosmetics highlighter again and I'm just gonna give it another tap just around the sides of the face to just give it an extra glow. But press it in, tap off the excess if there's too much on it, but I'm just gonna press it on the cheekbone. I don't press too much because I really don't want it to lift the concealer or the foundation, but just tap it in like that. See how it's given it that wet look again. Nice sheen on the skin. Because once I put that powder down, it just makes everything matte. So if you've got something glowy underneath, at least it has a bit of dimension. To keep the skin nice and skin looking, what I'm gonna do is use the Hourglass Translucent Powder. I am going to set the under eye area just by tapping it. Now lately I've been doing this and I feel like it keeps my skin looking very luminous and like skin. However, I find that it doesn't help. Um, it doesn't help smooth that texture. So I'm gonna to powder this in two ways so that you can see what I do to make it smooth even though I'm not baking the under eye area. You really wanna be careful with this because if you dust it too hard, you're just gonna lift off all the concealer. And then I'm gonna dust the center. Dust down the nose, dust the sides, 
plus the chin. I find that I look really like a smooth base around the nose area. So I will go back in with the Beach um, Nars Velvet Loose Powder. And then I will press my sponge into the powder and press it around the nose area. Cause I find obviously that's where the texture really lives the most, but there you go. It just smooths everything out. Um, I just won't touch the eye area because I don't want to dry it out too much. As you can see, it's very smooth. Now taking the Hourglass Luminous Light, you guys know this is my ride or die, but it's very much hit the pan at this point. But I will swirl a really big fluffy brush in there. So I tap off the excess, but I will just lightly, very light-handedly swirl it all over where I set everything. This dusts off that excess translucent powder, but at the same time, it deposits a really nice glow on the skin. So everything looks like skin again. Hmm? See? Ooh. You can skip this step, but I really like doing this if I've done a contour, but I take the medium dark Laura Mercier translucent powder and I use it to set the contour. I take the slightest, slightest bit and I just tap it where I contoured before and I use the liquid Laguna as well. So it just sets everything on the outskirts of the face. You see, it just like smooths everything out. I'm gonna go back in with that bronzer that I used initially, the MAC Give Me Sun, and I'm gonna tap this NARS brush in there. You can find something, oh, there's foundation on it. But tapping it in. Next up, to give the skin a little bit more of a glow, I'm taking the Hourglass Radiant Light. This is very similar to the Luminous Light, except it's a little bit more bronzy, so I just pop it on the actual cheekbones. You don't need too much of it, it just gives you a little bit more warmth. So next up, I am taking the MAC Melba Blush. Now, this is a favorite for a lot of people. It's this pink one here. It just gives you a nice glow without adding too much shimmer which my face already has a lot right now. So sometimes you want to just balance it out with something more matte. And this is like the perfect color, but I sweep it under the jawline. I don't pop it on the top because my cheeks are already really round and I've bronzed it so much that it's given it a lot of fullness that I want to take the blush just under the cheekbone. Foundation powder, this one's from MAC and it's in the color C30. Now, I like to clean up the edges with this. Sometimes I go a little bit too over the cheekbone line and it gets a little bit messy, but just to clean it up really quickly, I will press it in just underneath that contour, just to clean it up a little bit. And sometimes I pull some to the front, but it just gives it a little bit of like a cleaner edge and it adds a little bit more coverage as well. But around here, Just looks a little bit cleaner from the front. It doesn't drag my face down as much. And then next up, I want to take the Bare Minerals Highlighter. This highlighter has really grown on me recently. This is the color Free. Now, when I first used it, I found it really hard to apply and I felt like there wasn't much color coming out. However, now that I've used it more and more and I've figured out the better way to use it, I am obsessed. It gives you like that wet look, which I am crazy about. I like using a fluffy angled brush. This is from Surat. Um, I got given this from work. I would not recommend buying it because it's very expensive and you don't need brushes that are that expensive, especially if you're just using it in your personal kit. Tap it in like this, tap the whole thing in like that, and I sweep it almost all over the cheekbone and the high points on the forehead. But I sweep it and sort of cascade it across. And they generally say don't pull the highlighter too close to the front of the face, but I find that it gives me a really, really nice glow. So I'll usually take the highlighter a little bit further past the eye. They always say stop around the eye or like just keep it at that little strip there, but I feel like your skin doesn't really glow in just a strip under the eye. I feel like when your skin glows and it's healthy, it's glowing all around the cheeks. And after the highlighter, maybe you might have to go back in with the blush, blush just to just fix it because you can sweep off a bit of the blush and the color sometimes. But you just want to pop it back on. And now I'm just going to finish off the eyes. But what I'm going to do is probably take the salted caramel just to sort of give it a bit of shape to begin with. And I'm just going to shade a little bit under here.
And then I'm gonna take the milk chocolate, which is that one there. And then I'm just gonna do the outskirts of the eye. Taking that brush there. There you go. So then next I'm gonna do my brows and then I'll come back to the eyes again and pop on the lashes. I find it a little bit hard to do brows if my lashes are on because they're quite thick and long and they keep obstructing the view of the brow, but we'll come back to that. My brows are finally done. Honestly, it took forever, but they are done and we can move on to lashes and lips, but I'm gonna do lips first and the lashes will be the very last step. I'm gonna use the color Freestar. I'm sure you guys have seen this color all over my Instagram. It's pretty much the only lip liner I use almost. Um, it's the best. But I overline my lips pretty hard. I'm gonna do one side and then you can compare the other side if you like. I just like to draw like a little W. So I go doot, doot. See how much it's over? Guys, I overline my lips quite a fair bit. So whatever you see on Instagram, on my posts, is not to real life. It's just me overlining my lips. No liner. I'm gonna go in with the color Yash and Freckle Tone from MAC in my palette here. With lipsticks, I tend to never really apply it straight from the tube. I never really apply it um, really heavily. I just press it in the center. And so when you press it in the center, it still keeps a bit of the shape. So this is the Kosas Jellyfish Lip Oil, which I love. And as you can see, it's pretty much empty. I'm just gonna use whatever's left over. But instead of applying it and wiping it across my lips, I'm actually gonna pat it in, because then if I wipe it across the lips, I find that it just gets rid of all the color underneath. Now, last time I used the Lavio Istanbul lashes and I'm gonna do the exact same thing again. Okay, so the lashes are on. You can put a little bit of highlighter in the inner corner if you like as well. I like to tight line my eyes, so I always do the top. I just feel like it makes the eyes look much bigger and it just ties everything together really. So I've tight lined my eyes and I've just fixed the lashes a little bit so my eyes look a little bit more even. Then I'm just gonna lightly contour my nose with the color wedge here from MAC with the fluffy brush. Just gonna lightly do it. I don't really like a very strong nose contour because in person it looks really muddy, but in photos it looks great. But sometimes I just go a little bit softer. across the bridge and I usually buff it into my brows so everything looks a little bit more seamless and I buff it into that little hollow space under the brow here as well just so everything ties in together. Becca Skin Love Mist. I really like this. It gives a really nice sheen to the skin. Would not recommend it for anybody with oily skin um, but I really love it. So I hope you guys did learn something today. I mean, all the techniques that I use are generally the same across the board. Maybe I'll change the eyeshadow colors occasionally and I'll change the lashes occasionally, but all the skin techniques I do are the same in every makeup look that I do. Yeah, I hope you learned something. Mm -hmm.